What should you do after a failed IVF cycle? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. I'm a fertility doctor. And so talking about failed cycles is something I do every single day. And I know there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to fertility treatments. And part of the reason why this channel exists is to help break it all down so that you can be more prepared for trying to get pregnant, whether you're just starting, understanding your body, or if you're doing fertility treatment like IVF or IUI. So please subscribe if you are interested and support us along the way. Now, when it comes to failed cycles, there's a few things that I think are really important to think of. And one is what makes it failed. And part of understanding what makes it failed is understanding what was the expectation. Because sometimes I see patients who come in for a second opinion when the outcome that they had was exactly the outcome that would have been expected. It just wasn't clearly explained to them or they didn't have an understanding of that. And that is a part of the problem. There are too many doctors who are very paternalistic and they just tell you you need IVF and they don't explain your odds of success or what the entire process is going to be like. So for the most part, when we talk about failed cycles, we usually mean not getting pregnant. But when it comes to IVF, it can also mean maybe not making embryos or not having any normal embryos. So when we think through it, let's break down a couple things. So for IUI, right? IUI is intrauterine insemination. This is when you're taking sperm and you're putting it into the uterus instead of having it in the vagina where it normally is. Now, of course, the vagina is an acidic environment, and so the sperm is in this ejaculate in order to protect it. And so you do have a concentrated sample, and moving it into the uterus can help some people get pregnant. IUI, even when you combine it with medications to improve or to increase someone's ovulation, is not going to help somebody ever get pregnant over their age-related chance. So whatever your age-related chances, that's your maximum chance of success with ovulation induction and or ovulation induction IUI. So when it comes to a failed cycle, most of the time we mean we did the cycle and we didn't get pregnant. However, sometimes it can mean like if you're doing ovulation induction that you didn't respond right and so you failed it because you didn't respond. So I always counsel people, goal one is to have an appropriate response to the medication in our goal range, whether that's one to two, one to three, one to four, two to four, whatever our goal number of eggs is to make with the medications that you're achieving that. That alone might be a successful cycle. Now, if you don't get pregnant, well, if you're age 37, you're not gonna have a higher than a 10 to 12% chance of it working. And so the most probable outcome was that the IUI did not work. And if you're upset because the cycle failed, Part of making sure it is framed right is, well, that was the most probable outcome. That's why often people need multiple IUIs and that it's more successful for people who are younger because their age-related chance of getting pregnant. So to me, the IUI didn't necessarily fail if you responded appropriately, the sperm looked good, you just didn't get pregnant. That was an expected outcome and understanding how many you're going to do and your chance of success is very important. More often, we're talking about IVF, right? And IVF is very complicated. So for the vast majority of people, IVF is now done in two parts. So we think of IVF or in vitro fertilization. In general, we're taking one month's group of eggs, getting them to grow, taking those eggs out of the body, fertilizing them in the lab, growing out to embryos and freezing the embryos. We may or may not be doing genetic testing. Then we are doing a frozen embryo transfer, which is where we take one of the embryos, thaw it, put it in a catheter, and put it into the body at the appropriate time. Sometimes these can be done together, and that's considered a fresh transfer, where you get the eggs out, fertilize them, let them grow out, take the best one or two, and put them in the body, and freeze the rest. Although we are seeing less and less that being done as first-line treatment because you can't do genetic testing. It has a higher risk of ovarian hyperstimulation. The uterine lining may be less receptive when there's high estrogen or progesterone receptors. And so this is becoming less common practice, although not unheard of. But for me, it is the rare candidate who is young enough to not need genetic testing, but a low egg count, so they're not gonna hyperstim, who fits this criteria. Okay, so let's look at IVF. Well, 
IVF then, if we consider it growing eggs and making embryos and doing genetic testing, you can fail at multiple places. You could not respond appropriately to the stimulation meds or have enough mature eggs. Maybe there's not good fertilization. Maybe the embryos stop developing and you don't make any embryos. Maybe they do, but you don't have any genetically normal. Now, your doctor should talk you through all steps of this process, so you should understand what is expected. And very commonly, I will see somebody who's older who is just so upset they didn't get any normal embryos, yet that was the most probable scenario. So let's pretend you're 40 and you have an antral follicle count of eight, and we get eight mature eggs, which is wonderful. And then you have 75 to 80% of them fertilized, so that's six. And then you have half of them grow out to blastocysts. These are average numbers, so that would be three. And then if you do genetic testing, I would expect 20 to 25% be normal. What is 20 to 25% of three? Zero to one. So you have zero normal embryos. That is exactly what would be expected, even if you hit perfect on the other metrics. That doesn't mean you can't find a normal embryo, but I would counsel that patient, you are gonna need multiple cycles. So we're not gonna consider this a failure if those are the numbers we have. We did great, we got the right number of mature eggs, they did good in the lab, we just didn't have a normal one in there and that's appropriate because of our age. On the flip end, I will see patients have terrible cycles and nobody's even told them that in my mind it's a failure because they didn't achieve this outcome. Maybe they were well, Understimulated, didn't get as many mature eggs, had a bad protocol. Therefore, they resulted in a much lower number than they should have had based on their age and their antral follicle count because of the protocol that was selected. And that may result in them having a lower number of embryos and a smaller family size, and they may need another cycle for that. And then you have frozen embryo transfers, which for the most part, failure is inability to get pregnant or you have negative pregnancy test, but it can also mean not responding right to the protocol, not having a lining that looks good, needing to cancel the cycle. So when you have a failed cycle, whatever it is, I like to say, have a WTF appointment. Like what the F happened here? And sometimes I start these all the same. So if you're my patient, you'll know this. Say, hey, I start these all the same. I'm gonna walk you through every step of the cycle, whatever the cycle was. Where did we fall at, above, or below average? Where can we make room for improvement? What can I do better? Should I do a different protocol? How many were mature? Do you need a longer trigger? Do they need to get to a bigger size? What showed in the lab? How is our sperm or egg quality? Maybe should we need to improve any of that? Or was it exactly as we expected and we need to do it again? Like, hey, it worked. We didn't get a normal embryo, but that's okay because of our age and our AMH and antral follicle count, but the protocol hit all the other metrics, so let's do it again. Understanding that is really essential. With an embryo transfer, we as humans think that genetically normal embryos are going to work. I mean, there is definitely this mindset, if you haven't done IVF, that IVF is just going to work for you. And I think everybody who's gone through it knows that that's not the case. With a genetically normal embryo, we tell people the average rate of success of a live birth is at best 65%, which means a large number of normal embryos do not become babies. And why is this? Let's think about the fact that having a genetically normal embryo is the low end of what we need. There is need for gene expression appropriately and cell division, and the embryo has to have certain metabolic components that help it become a baby. And so a lot of times those things don't happen and it's the embryo's fault and we don't have a test to know that yet. And we know this because if I don't change the protocol, I do the exact same protocol for embryo transfer and I transfer one embryo, we have a 65% chance of live birth. If now I've gone to my second single embryo transfer, now it is an 88% chance of live birth. And if now I've gone to my third transfer, single transfer of a genetically normal embryo, 95% of people will have success with that. So if we truly view failure of implantation or recurrent implantation failure, that officially would be after three transfers that are not successful 
of genetically normal embryos, and only about 5% of people would fit into this group. Although it is devastating to go through IVF and not have success, so we're constantly looking at how can we do better and what could we be missing. But we are constantly seeing tests like the ERA fall out of favor and have more data support that unless you really have recurrent implantation failure, that test might do more harm than good. And there's limited blood testing and things that we can do, even though there's some. But some people will take advantage and try to charge you insane amounts of money telling you you have implantation failure after one embryo did not implant. And again, the first thing I'll tell somebody if I'm seeing you and we've had one transfer and it hasn't worked, this is okay. This was one of the expected outcomes because if 65% are gonna get to a live birth, that means 35% are not. And that doesn't mean anything's wrong with you if you're in a room with 35% of my patients who've gone through IVF. You're in a big crowded room, that's okay. Of course though, we wanna look through where can we improve? Was the protocol right? Could we make do things better? Was it a controlled cycle? Do you need Lupron? Could you have endometriosis? Could you use a natural cycle? Have you ever achieved pregnancies before? So I'm always thinking about how do I improve things, but I think it's important to understand where we are concerned is where failure is the unexpected outcome, where we're very surprised or things did not go right. When things happen, it is hard, right? You have hopes and dreams for that embryo and having an embryo not implant is a loss. It's much more than a negative pregnancy test. That being said, it doesn't mean that you can't achieve success. Trying to optimize everything you can is part of it. So when you have that WTF visit, well, one, recommend scheduling one. Two, ask your doctor to walk you through the protocol. Three, ask if they would make any changes. Four, ask if there's anything you can do from a lifestyle standpoint that may help, even if literature is not impressive. And five, ask when they start to get worried. When would you do something different? When are you worried this is not going to work for me? How many more cycles do you anticipate we're going to need? Trying to have your expectations set appropriately from the beginning can really help if we fall into the place of having a failed cycle. And if you're not getting the questions answered that you need, don't hesitate to get a second opinion. Infertility is so personal. Going through fertility treatments is so hard. Having a doctor, a team, a clinic that you resonate with, essential. And so if you're not getting your questions answered, send your record somewhere else. Have somebody else look over your cycle. And there's times that I tell patients that maybe they should seek another opinion. Don't be fearful of that. You need to be in charge of your journey. At the end of the day, this is your family and you deserve the peace of mind knowing you had all your questions answered and you did everything you can. I know failed cycles are hard. They are common. And so when you think about the definition of what really is failure, was it an expected or an unexpected outcome? To review the cycle with your doctor, get an appointment, ask them what changes they would make, or at least send a message depending on how your team communicates. And sometimes I will send messages to my patients. Hey, that didn't work that stinks, not unexpected. Here's what I want to do differently next time. And then we carry on. If you're going through IVF, I know it can be hard. I have lots of IVF content, so feel free to dig in. Ask questions below so that we can answer them. As always, you can follow along on at Natalie Crawford MD on Instagram or TikTok for more information, or you can listen to the As A Woman podcast. Thanks, friends.